Okay. You guys turn that down a little bit? Oh, man, my kids are obsessed with gumball. Alright, um... So, seven. Now, this is really simple. Now, here, uh, same process as this. Okay. Um, you've got something squared. This was something to the absolute value of. So, something squared means that this is the parent function, and that it's going to result in a transformation. Now, what did this transformation do? Well, if you just look at the parentheses, you can see that it's right 5, and it's down 7. That's exactly what they're asking up here. Okay? So, down 7. This is up 7, so it can't be C or D. Uh, which one? It's down 7 to the right 5. Okay, so it's just B. So that's kind of an easy one. These two are very much related. This actually was more work. Okay, so this guy was really simple. So let me use the ones get away Alright, so now we're going to graph this piecewise function. I'm going to go ahead and get some a pencil here. I'm going to look for my pencil. There we go. Alright, so right here I've got, uh, I got three pieces. Alright. And what I can do is, if I got my eraser, I can essentially, um, if, if graphing piecewise functions make you nervous, what I would do is graph the first thing through the whole graph, then erase it, graph the second thing, erase it, and graph the third thing, erase it. And when I say erase it, just erase the, the part of the domain that you do not need. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to go ahead and graph uh, x, got a ruler here, x plus 2. So x plus 2 means that I start at 2, it's got a slope of 1, and so this guy would go right here, I'm going to go ahead and just draw my graph. I mean it's got a slope of 1, okay, let's see, there. Okay. Alright, so that is the first one. However, I only want the part that is greater than 1. So this means that I want this piece that is greater than 1, so I go to 1 in my domain, and I only want this piece. Okay. So what I did is I used the y-axis, even though he's not going to be part of my domain, but I used it to get the positioning right for the line. And so x plus 2 is going to lose everything that is less than 1. Okay. And because I do not have a bar, that means that it will go right up to it, but it will not touch it. It'll just, like, brush up to it. And so we're just going to extend that uh, off to everything larger than 1, okay, which is the rest of the number line. Now, the second, now, he's done. Okay, he's completely done. Now, if you're on the SAT, you might be able to actually spot out which of the multiple choice questions, you know, uh, you might actually be done right now and not have to graph the other two. But... Um, this one, you have to graph everything because you're being a professional. So we're at 2. That means if um, there's no variable, there's no change. And so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a flat line at 2 that goes across the whole thing. But because it's a piecewise, I only want the part that is between negative 1 and 1. And I will include both of those. So they're going to have filled in holes at 1 and negative 1. So at 1, 1 here and negative 1 there. Okay, and that's at positive 2. So we're going to go ahead and fill that in. Alright, he's he's done. Now let's do x minus 1. Now x minus 1 means that I've got a slope of 1, but i got a y-intercept of negative 1. Now notice that I'm using the y-axis here. Alright, i still got a positive slope, but I only want the part that is in between negative 3 and negative 1. This guy's not going off to infinity. He's going to negative 3. So I only want this piece here and here. I'm going to go ahead and just not use the ruler. All right. And it uh, looks like I got some overlap there. So that's when you know that something's up. Because then it wouldn't be a function. It would fail the vertical line test. So you can't have overlap with functions. Or else the x-coordinate is going to two numbers. And it can only go to one. So these guys are open. So we're going to go ahead and put open circle, open circle. All right. All right, and that's it. This is the finished uh, graph. We don't know what it represents, but that is mathematically sound. Okay, so we got it all solved. All right, so let's move to the next page. We are at the four-minute mark here. All right, so race car driver travels 34 feet in the first second of the race. So if the driver travels three additional feet each subsequent second, how many feet did the 
uh, driver travel in 52 seconds. Okay, so we started at 34. Now this is an arithmetic sequence, okay? And so we're just going to put um, A sub N, and we're going to visualize what this guy's doing. Okay, first of all, we start at uh, 34, and then every time he goes up by 3. Okay, so 37, and then 40, and uh, man, that's the third second he traveled 40. We're going to go all the way to 52 seconds. No, it's too, it's too locked. So what we want to do then, okay, he travels 31. Driver travels three additional feet each subsequent second. How many feet did the driver travel in 52 seconds? Okay, so we want, we got to add them all up too, okay? Because if I travel 34 feet in that first second, and then I traveled another 37, that means I traveled a total of 71 feet in those first two seconds and the driver just keeps getting three feet every second so we're adding them all up okay now that's going to require two formulas okay number 10 is a lot easier than nine by the way but this is going to require two formulas because if i want to add them all up okay i need this guy right here s sub n now this formula says that if i have the n uh, here i've got the first term and i've got the last term of my sequence um, add them up, multiply by how many, in this case, how many seconds, and then I'm going to divide by two. I'm going to get that total summation, okay? And this guy keeps going and going, okay? Um, but the problem with this is that I know that N is 52. I know that I started with 34, but I don't know how many feet I traveled in that last second. So here's where I need the first formula. This is the, the, the last formula, and I need the first formula because at, 50, at the 52 mark, I need to know how many I traveled, that way down the list. I need to know that number way down the list, and I'm not about to add 3 every time. So this is what we do. We start off with 34, and then we add 3 times how many additional ones. So I'm going to go n minus 1, all right, and n in this case was 52, so let me just write over that. So I got 34 plus, that's going to be 3 times 51. 51 times 3 is 1, let's see, that's going to be 153. 153 plus 34 is 187. So it looks like in that last second, this guy was at 187. Now, this is what we do. We go ahead and use the 187. Um, now, first of all, is 187 reasonable? I think so. 187 seems about right. I am traveling 52 seconds, plus 3 every time. Yeah, that does seem reasonable. It doesn't seem far-fetched, so watch out for that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find that at sub n 52, okay, we're going to add them all up now. And this says that 52 is right here. I'm going to have my calculator ready for this one. All right, and then I've got the first, 34, and then I went 187. And now I'm going to divide by 2. And if you set this up correctly, you're all set. Um, well, literally, right? Because if you set it up correctly, you, of course you would be all set. So 221 times 52. Um, and then divide by 2. Okay, now notice, though, that right there is you might see this and then think that, oh, that's correct. No, don't forget to divide by 2. We didn't divide by 2 yet, so this is what's called a distractor. Okay, so watch out for that. That right there is the number. This is the sum of all of the feet that we traveled. Okay, all of the feet. Not just the how many we traveled in that last 50 second second, but rather all of them added together. And that's what the power of this formula does. All right, which of these is arithmetic? So remember that you have to go up a certain amount every single time. Okay, this will be the last one for this video. Um, so negative 3 moving to negative 1 is positive 2. It's going to the right 2, from your perspective, to the right 2. So this guy's 2, that's 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, so this is all going up by 2, so we're good. This guy right here, um, this guy is going down, let me think, 15.5 minus 14. I'm getting nervous because I'm on video here. And so now, for, uh, that's 1.5. Okay, so 15.5. So um, let me erase all this. 15.5 minus 1.5. Okay. 
14 minus 1.5 to 1. Okay, good. Minus 1.5. I just don't trust myself right now. 11 minus 1.5. Okay. Minus 1.5. Yeah, that's 8. Okay, so that guy's good. Okay. All right. Now here, let's see. This one's go 84 minus 80. That's a difference of 4. So the arithmetic difference is 4. Here we're dropping 6. And here we're dropping 8. Here we're dropping 10. So no. That's not it. All right. Negative. Okay, now look at this. This is actually negative becoming positive, becoming negative, becoming like that right there is enough to know that that can't happen, right? Um, if this was a negative 6, it still wouldn't work because negative 4 goes to 2. That's a difference of 6. Okay, so it can't be this guy. Uh, this guy is going up by 6. Is that right? Going up by 6. Let's see. Uh, negative 50. I, again, I don't trust myself. All right, plus 6. Negative 44 plus 6. Negative 38 plus 6. Negative 32 plus 6. Negative 20. Okay, so that guy's good. All right. Okay, so just make sure that this difference, notice that in every case it has to work. If there is just one of them, that fails the arithmetic difference, then you cannot include that as an arithmetic sequence. All right?